Hello and welcome back to Let's Try. We're trying Dice Tribe's Ambitions. This is another game from uh, Sprouting Potato that made Crop Rotation, um, which I covered a little bit ago and I really liked, and I really like this game as well, spoilers. Um, this is doing something similar to like Stacklands where it's kind of a colony sim, but it's uh, kind of tapping into that board game vibe. Um, for Stacklands, it was cards, and uh, for Dice Tribes, it's dice. So we're going to jump into it. You've probably seen a few games that look similar in terms of like mechanics, but I promise you that Dice Tribes is, it stands on its own two feet and it's, it's really quite good. So we're going to go ahead and do a scenario from a list of predefined tribes. Um, I have tried Settlers. I kind of wouldn't mind trying something different, but... For, since I've played Settlers, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and just play it because I, I know what to expect. I actually did lose my game. I thought it was doing really well, and then I discovered, uh, actually, I'm uh, about to die, and then I, I just kind of died. So uh, we're going to we're gonna play it. It's, there's a lot going on here, but it's, it's pretty intuitive. Uh, I think you know exactly what to expect here. Uh, you're basically playing dice sides. These are rolled between rounds. You're playing them on, uh, you know, certain actions that have requirements and we're going to be doing something similar to Stacklands. We're going to be exploring different zones which are going to open up possibilities for us and allow us to further use more of our people slash dice to the best of their ability. Um, and we're also going to be doing, we're going to be training our dice and in fact I'll go ahead and do that now. I'm going to go ahead and train this guy here to be uh, a farmer and um then we'll set this i'm gonna i'm gonna go ahead and create another settler right away our first um like i'd say priority we do want to focus on like raising how much food we can make but we also want to um birth some new settlers so that we have more dice to play with uh then we're gonna go ahead and throw these these sixes are required for um for exploration i'll go ahead and throw this explore the explorers are are like we'll get into classes they're they're kind of funky and um it's one of the few things that it took me a little bit to figure out but i think it works quite well um let's go for grasslands since that's more food and then we'll go for forest which gives us uh yeah we'll go for forest which gives us food and potential forest these are random they're kind of like cards they they're they're randomly pulled up once we explore those zones and then we can go ahead and uh take advantage of them right away so we'll throw a six on this forge that's going to give us some more food and that's all of our players or uh people played we'll end our turn we'll get our dice back we get another settler right away um and we'll continue so we've got ourselves a farmer so the thing about classes there's really only one that uh one or two i guess that have restrictions i think it's really only the explorer the explorer is the only one that can't really be played on everything it can be played on these exploration cards and it can be played on one of these explore like find a new card zones action spaces um, but as far as I can tell, mostly um, classes dictate two things. They'll dictate uh, the value of resources that you get from playing, and they also dictate how what kind of size they have. So if I highlight farmer here, you'll see it's not a it's not a stock standard die. It's uh, usually you have like one to six sides. On this, you have two, two, three, three, and four, four. The reason for that is because um, the value that they give to farming is doubled. And actually, if you have two farmers, we're going to go ahead and train two. You can more often than not do a full harvest in one turn. And I'm going to show you what that means. So if I was to put one of these uh, characters here in the harvest, it was would reduce this 15 down to 12. It would just reduce it by a flat three. Uh, we want to reduce this to zero in order to, to harvest eight food. We're going to need food, obviously. Um, that's going to keep our, our little town going. But if I put a farm uh, farmer on that harvest, then it's going to double that amount. So if I put this four down, it's going to reduce it by eight to seven. Um, so if we have two farmers, you can see here, um, if you're really quite lucky, you have a like one in three chance for each die to reduce it by eight. And so if two farmers can actually reduce this harvest to zero each round, and if you play your dice right, 
then um, you'll be able to do it uh, pretty reliably every single round. So uh, harvesting on farms is, is quite good. You, you know, you're going to kind of like find your groove here and figure out what you need more of, which classes uh, benefit you more. So we're going to definitely want a second farmer. Uh, that much I know. And then uh, we'll take advantage of some of these other um well our forest for one thing so let's go ahead and see if we can afford some food out of that we could definitely get some wood but we definitely want some food for now um and uh, like I, I would like to take advantage of these other ones we can also start looking working on our ambition so this is the win condition win by becoming a prospering tribe so first we have to reach a population of 15. then we trigger a golden age and then we survive golden age while maintaining max population during Golden Age, all villagers will consume two food instead of one. So I messed up because there was events down here, and it's similar to Dot Age. I feel like this game and Dot Age share a lot in common. Dot Age is a bit more uh, Euro board games where it's doing kind of uh, uh, worker placement. This is worker placement as well, but it's it's less about um, less about the action spaces and more about the die faces. You have to kind of work with both. So Dot Age is a bit more traditional Euro game, and this is a bit more. Um, I guess engine builder like uh, you forgive me if you don't know what these terms generally mean but there's there's a mix of genre going on here so i'm gonna go ahead and throw this on um, uh, prosperity because we want to uh get that going you'll need about 30 food maybe i don't want to necessarily start that just yet or we could do conquest maybe i can't do conquest win by conquering the neighboring tribe conquer neighbor guess the correct die value for each position to win hints will be provided at the end i actually didn't do this so this is an interesting one requires logic and some luck well let's just do prosperity um because i know what to expect from that and um and then we'll see can i so uh i have a three and a five and i one thing i really appreciate in this game is there's some pretty good quality of life features so i could go into planning mode right and that'll like me like let me uh, make moves without making moves and see how it affects the game. Um, I don't necessarily want to do that. I'm pretty pretty confident in how I do things. So um, this five, you can see, I don't have a lot of options. I have this merchant down here, but the merchant uh, works with die face and this five would only make uh, trade in science for food, which we don't have. We can't trade do the three because that's stone for food and we have no food. So basically these die faces are not really working for us. So what we want to do is re-roll them. Uh, when we start, we have a certain number of tools. So I'm going to go ahead and re-roll this five. That's going to re-roll it. I think it will re-roll to anything but the five. Result will always be of a different value. So it won't be a four is the important part. Oh, sorry, a five. <laughs> Sorry, uh, that's I know that's confusing. Um, so we got a we got a four. It's still not helpful. Um, I would prefer to have. I, I want basically to uh, match one of these, which we need two or lower. So let's try to try again. This one's a six. Six isn't bad because at least we can make progress on this explore grasslands. But honestly, I think we'd rather spend the six on getting uh, something else like a hill. But honestly, I think more food would be good. So let's go ahead and throw it on that. So we still can't spend this four. Let's go ahead and re-roll it. Ah, one. That's, I mean, that's okay. It, it better, but because we can actually use it, um, we could make another villager with it, for example. In fact, why don't we just go ahead and risk it all and do that? I'm pretty confident in my ability to get more food. And we've already got good things going on, so... Uh, and then we have like research up here. So we're going to be collecting science over time from uh, various uh, zones, like mostly, I think, the hill, uh, the forest. But we can also gain it from merchants, which we had a potential uh, option for, but it didn't really work out. So we can see here we got our farmer uh, on a, as a two and a farmer as a three. Um, so neither of those are ideal. I'm going to go ahead and reroll one of those. So this is generally how I you spend my turn is I want to prioritize the farmer first. So we got a four. This is good. Um, that extra dot isn't really going to go anywhere, but we got a four and we got our harvest. And that's the important thing. Uh, we could spend the three, but I'd rather reroll this into a four. But then again, if I reduce this, then it'll make it uh, nine isn't actually very good because now I'm going to need to spend two dice at the very minimum on the next turn. 
I suppose I could spend this four, or if I spent a two on that, it would make it a seven, and then I can reduce this on the next turn with a farmer, so that works out. We have some pretty good low, low uh, numbers here, so we'll go ahead and take advantage of uh, some of these. So let's get some science. Let's get some more food. Um, let's re-roll some of these. That's a three. That's perfect. We'll be able to forge some food with that. We can re-roll re this as well. I don't want another farmer or another villager just yet because uh, you really don't want to... You want to slow your roll a little bit. We'll forge some of that. The next thing I want to do is start training some builders. Well, I, just one builder. And like I said, most of the time the classes uh, kind of dictate the amount of resources you get as well as the die faces, mostly. I don't think you really... Uh, I, like, you're never required to have... Um, a class do any specific thing. I think the farmer is really the the major one where like you really do want to have the farmer doing the farming. You benefit the most from that. There's a few other cases where that's the case. I didn't mean to do that. I don't want to retrain the farmer. There's a couple of other cases where it is like important, but for the most part, I think the farmer is the biggest example of like, you really want to have that class doing that work. Um, so let's go ahead and start exploring this grasslands. Exploring, by the way, you'll see here. When explorer performs exploration, they will explore the biome further and discover additional benefits. Cannot use any building. So um, in this case, like by by doing this, we have the potential to make this grasslands uh, perform better for us. We've got a lot of sixes, which isn't necessarily great for us. Um, I'm just looking at what we could do, what we could research up here. Foraging is quite good. In fact, we want to get foraging going as quickly as we can. But I, I've already re, uh, used up all of our, um, all of our tools. So that's not going to work out just yet. I think I'd like to, um, continue getting some more food. Stone is also important. Let's go ahead and insert uh checking out the hills um we do have a two we could th throw at this that'll give us some more research sixes are really mostly good for um exploration so having all of these is is a little a little dicey i mean they like just exploring doesn't actually get us anything it just opens up more possibility but I guess more possibility is still good. So we'll go ahead and explore another. This is like kind of ridiculous. We don't need to be doing this. Um, the thing we are really prioritizing right now is growth. Uh, so we need more food and we need more villagers. And therefore we need more food for our villagers. Merchant would be pretty good. We could stand to get some stone, but we've got plenty of possibility for stone. Merchant's gone. These opportunities down here um, will shift around. You'll see here what uh, is going to happen. So on our next turn, we're going to have a random danger and another random opportunity. You can actually spend dice to make these stick around, which is kind of nice. So this one will change dice into ones, which is pretty cool because then we could like, for instance, uh, turn this into a one and then make another villager, which I guess I will do. Um, we'll spend a farmer on that. I guess we, that was probably a really poor way of doing that but we got another four that's good i usually don't straddle these farms across turns so it's a little weird but it's working out for us we got a lot of twos and threes actually we just got threes which threes are good though because we can get these forges we get the maximum from these forges these ones require um less than or equal to three and then we get the value from that so you really want to put down threes on there because you're getting the most bang for your buck We'll get some stone, and then we can throw down a, uh, an explorer. We'll throw down uh, on there, and we'll get some more. I don't believe that explorers get double, so they're but you know they're limited to um, just these locations. So we'll throw down there, and that's our turn. Doing well for food, we're actually getting a surplus of food. Okay, so our, our random negative effect is amnesia. This is kind of this the, the, this does kind of remind me of dot age. So we have three turns left. If the event is not clear, the bad outcome will happen. So we need to spend a two and a six to make a map. Otherwise, uh, our two random locations will be lost. Um, what we have 
that to spare so let's go ahead and throw that down we also got really lucky on our farmers they got they both became a four I actually kind of want to spend uh, one more die to become a farmer just so that we can get out of this weird loop of like always being uh, having a like leftover if that makes sense um, and then let's see what we, we can spend our four to get some wood we can spend our three we can't really do anything with this three let's go ahead and re-roll it it became a two two's not bad we can get some stone I'd like to get some more uh, food though um, I want to get as close to five as possible six is actually bad for us so I'm gonna go ahead and re-roll that again all right well the best we could do is three so we'll get three food from that that's fine so right now we're just trying to focus on getting to a population 15 we got oh I thought those were our rolls they were not our rolls so we'll roll uh, a farm that became a three I'd like it to become a four it was not a four we want two fours okay we got a second four that works out we'll throw this down we could throw this down and then um like one one pip so we got two harvests and we'll make another settler since we're doing pretty good on food um these are good these are actually very good we could get some stone stone we are lacking in stone we have enough food we don't have basically any stone and we'll get a bit more food from this so why don't we consider yeah let's um let's research foraging that's going to allow us to build some new structures right now we only have farm but we want to be able to unlock new structures so now that's opened the possibility for building a foraging hut foraging huts are good because basically they um uh kind of accumulate uh, har forageable food for every time you explore a new landscape so we do want that i'm gonna go ahead and throw this down that's gonna make it right away but we're gonna need to spend dice and resources in order to actually establish this so in this case we need a less than an equal four and a greater and equal uh f four to um in order i guess i i reverse what i just said but you know what i mean in order but we want to spend those fours on the the farm um so let's go ahead and pl spend a uh, less than an equal four on that and then maybe we can re-roll and get greater than nope no not on that one um this can't this three can't be spent on anything but so we'll re-roll it again wow it became a one huh getting very unlucky there we go there we go we have a greater and equal so those are going to stay there that means that when we end the turn this will build the foraging hut we'll make another person to put it gently and um uh, i'm actually going to spend these farmers on some of these twos because it'd be nice to get rid of some of these twos that are hanging around once you've like placed on all of these spots it's spend like it, it, it you're spending the location basically you can only place once on all of these in the exploration zone so uh you do kind of want to just like you know take advantage of them get get rid of them get what you can from them and then move on and then uh, you'll have to explore a new zone so this hill there is spent it's done with and uh, we're moving on we can get rid of this or we can spend the rest of this grassland um, and we can get the rest of the wood from this forest uh, and similarly we can get the most out of this rich grassland we got pretty lucky on that rich grassland that's gonna give us lots of food let's also um, yeah I suppose I'll throw a three on the harvest and we can throw it one but I'd actually rather throw that three on there and then spend the one to make another settler and then uh, now we've got our foraging hut right now it has no reserves this is explore new areas and the food will automatically be collected here at the end of the turn uh, food from unique locations will not be affected so this will basically get like synergizes with exploration which speaking of which why don't we get another exploration going we need a six Wow, we're getting very unlucky there's only one there's, there's a two and a three and then three sixes the chances are pretty good that the explorer is a six because it makes it easier to actually explore so why don't we go ahead and hit the forest i want to try and find ourselves a orchard or sorry a, a apple tree it's rare but you know it's not 
completely unlikely. Uh, and we'll go ahead. We've got tons of wood, but having wood is not bad. Oh, we've only got one chance at this migration, and I think I already blew it. Shoot. I uh, kind of missed it. There's only one turn left. This would have given us another person. So I did blow that, unfortunately. Sucks. Um... I haven't played with the storage. It's an interesting concept. It basically lets you store dice. I'm not sure how I feel about that. It's a little odd. Um, so I haven't really gone for that. Let's just forge some more wood. We can always trade that when the merchant comes around. Okay. Ah, we got a migration and we got a priest. Blessed dice. Uh... Blessed, blessed dice are great, and I usually throw this on the farmer uh, because it makes them way more likely to roll fours, which is fantastic. Um, let's go ahead and, and re-roll some of these farms. Two, huh? Okay, we got a four. We got a second four. Perfect. So we're going to be able to make our harvest. And I would like to take advantage of this migration. Um... This is a strange one. Place it to gain a new villager at the end of the turn. You can all use one slot at a time and each slot will provide one village. Okay, so that is pretty good, except for the fact that I don't have a three. We can just leave those guys on there and then basically wait for a three on the next turn. Like placing these two dice on here doesn't mean I've wasted them because it still clears those slots. Then we'll explore this the forest um we've got a lot of dice. actually maybe i should just throw this and we need more explorable zones uh so let's go ahead and grab another forest and that'll give us more options for the rest of our dice so we'll get some food from this uh let's make another person we're actually going to be really good for people um i'm going to start to run into food problems potentially and let's see is there anywhere else i can throw some of these lads i guess not it's kind of an issue so why don't we go ahead and throw them in the harvest and just reduce that for the next turn our priest will bless our uh farmer that's indicated with a little plus sign there's a fire uh oh big old fire huh and i have no fours except for the farmers and i'm i re refuse to spend farmers on putting out a fire. This is probably how I lost. If the danger is not cleared, a random building will be demolished. This is how you lose, is you're like, oh, I'll take care of it later. And then you forget. And then, uh, you know, things uh, get out of hand. So why don't we go ahead and make some tools, or at least we'll, we're going to research some tools. Uh, we're going to explore this zone. We're going to forage a bit this is gonna get finish that forest off and we're, we're actually kind of out of options so i guess that storage wouldn't be a bad idea because then we would uh be able to keep some of our options open oh that would have uh, allowed us to finish the migration that's a bummer but that's fine um i'm gonna go ahead and create another forest which is gonna give us more food but very little else actually Okay, let's, um, let's see if we can get lucky here. Yeah, we did get lucky. Uh, why don't we create a hill? We're getting a lots of these, like, you know, things that uh, benefit from ones and twos. It's not like, there's not a lot of those. So um, that's actually creating a problem for us. <clears throat> we could you spend these three fives to uh, do another harvest, which wouldn't be a bad idea. Or I could um bank the farm on these roll the dice immediately get reward dependent uh the problem with this is i only get re one reward and the most i can get is five food i'd rather spend those on the harvest and get eight food i have three more turns uh to do the migration and i have three more turns for the fire i just need two fours i just need any fours really that are not the farmers Wow, no far no fours again. Oh wait, no, sorry, they haven't rolled yet. My bad. Okay, we did get some fours, so let's throw two fours on that fire. Um 
the blessed farmer did not roll a four that's kind of wild we'll throw we'll re-roll it we'll throw it on the harvest we'll throw a three on that migration that's probably gonna get us to 15 villagers in fact this is kind of overkill i don't even think we can have more than 15 villagers so that's that's a little bit much um I could have another explorer. Let's train another explorer, and uh, maybe we should even exp uh, train another farmer. Not sure about that. Um, this insight will let us change one of our dice into a four, so we can ha harvest that to the best of our ability. We'll reroll this explorer so we can explore this forest, um, and then I'll just kind of wing it. Let's, you know, we, I was hoping I could turn this farmer into a four. Actually, I think I'd rather spend it on one of these guys since I'm not doing very well at clearing some of these. And then we have tons of dice left over. We could, if we wanted to, do just about anything else. I'm starting to think that maybe we do want that warehouse. Um... Let's make a, we'll make a builder. They have a higher chance of having rolling fours so you can more easily build. Um, I actually really like the water well, so we'll research the water well. And um, we can, oh, this, this one's even and I have two non-even dice. Bummer. Okay, let's just throw our three and five on the farm. That actually works out quite well. So we have researched more buildings. So now we have the option of triggering the golden age. The golden age is going to be, uh, it, it's going to be a hard storm to weather, but let's give it a go. I, I kind of want to see if I can do this as quickly as possible to show off the game in a relatively uh, bite-sized amount of time. So let's see if we'll, we'll get that harvest and I'm going to throw another four on there. I'll reroll this guy. See if I can get another four. Come on, third third time's a charm. No four for us. Instead, we got a three. We could research apiculture though. That'll uh, give us access to the apiary. Um, I do want the well. The well is really good. It's one of my favorite buildings. So we'll go ahead and spend four stone. That's we're not we're gonna get that on the next turn. We'll research the apiary. We can turn things into threes if we want, but we really just, we have twos and ones. That's gonna let us uh, clear these explorables. Let's explore another, another zone. Okay, we finally got one that wasn't just like ones and twos. Um, this one will let us actually like potentially unlock some new stuff. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and spend two dice to get that second harvest. We'll do this on the next turn. Although I could turn this guy into a three and then get that forage. So that's pretty good. Um, you can also like destroy these. I don't find that that is very helpful. Um, at least I haven't come across too many like scenarios where that's like really helpful. Um, Let's go ahead and train a forager. We have five food in this foraging hut now. So um, the forager gets double the food back and they also, I think, have a higher chance of, yeah, of rolling twos. So the forager is really good for getting the food. That's like the one other scenario I've found where the class like really is incentivized. Um, I guess the builder is good, but the builder doesn't like double anything. They just have a higher chance of rolling what you need to build. Similarly, the explorer has a higher chance of rolling a six, so they have a higher chance of being able to do exploration. They are the only class I know of that is actually limited, like they can't go anywhere else, but um, for the most part, the classes are, are, they're incentives. They're not really like mandatory, you know? So here's the well. The well is really cool. It lets you flip the dice. So uh, you have a better chance of like, getting what you need so for instance i think I could, if i could yeah if i flip this to two it becomes a four and this is more consistent now so i have a better chance of just getting the side i need to make my harvests um we actually could stand like i'm i'm losing a lot of food right now so let's uh let's maybe train another farmer um 
this three would just become another three. We need more explorables. We need tons of food. Let's do more grasslands. There we go. And um, actually, let's do like a forest. We just need as much options as we possibly can get for food. Um, so we'll throw down threes on those forages. Um, we could throw down a four to create an apiary. We've got tons of food, so that is going to be a good option for us. So I'll go ahead and start building that. This is less than four, so we need a four and greater to build that. And um, we need a three to forage, so that'll get us more food. So we've we've made back quite a lot of food. Um, and I'll throw down this forage. That'll give us four food from that. And we'll get some food from this. So we can throw down this three. I, I want to turn it into a four, obviously. There we go. It's a four. That we'll be able to reap that on the next zone. Let's see if we can get something. Yeah, perfect. I was hoping for a two. So we can get some more forage from this grasslands. And uh, yeah, I mean, like, this is the game. It's, uh, it's you know, a very, like, it's a, a game that has a lot of player agency. And I really appreciate that. It's it's a game that really like like it does have a lot of strategy, but it's really about like keeping your options open and making the most of what you have. It I, I find there's very little luck in this game, to be honest. Um, at least I have found that to be the case. Like yeah, you could like oh shoot, I wasted a die here, and uh, therefore I, I don't get a prize here. So like yeah, there's gonna be like luck adjacent events and stuff like that, and maybe you just lose because you but it's mostly like strategy like you're not you're not gonna lose because you rolled badly you're gonna lose because you didn't play your dice in an optimal way at least that's um my, the way i see it so okay let's see here our apiary we need a three we're gonna harvest from that um we don't need to forage anymore so i can use this two to uh get something we definitely want to do as much exploration as we can so we've actually filled that up completely. Um, I I feel like we've gotten kind of unlucky with some of these, but it's not a big deal. Um, the apiary like will always like certain dice, but you can see it changes every time. So if I throw this down, it'll change it. It's changed it into a one. I don't like that, but hey, we'll change the six into a one and harvest from that. And it still wants a one. I wonder, does this change? This changes every time. Will be halved after harvesting. Oh, it grows by one. Okay, so the apiary. I wonder. You can only make one of each building. Oh, uh, you know what? We need to research. We need to research the orchard. That's a more reliable food. Um, I need to start exploring. Make those uh, zones better. Um, I'd really like to learn how to make the orchard, but I don't have what I need. So maybe we can. Yeah, if we can get this to be a three or five, that's perfect, because then we can throw... Oh, right. Not enough science. We don't have enough science. Shoot. I need more science. Okay. Um. Wow. And we don't have much opportunity for science. So let's just forage a bit more. Really, like, the food requirements are kind of insane right now. But hey, we're getting tons of food in our foraging hut. We have tons of potential. We can throw this right there and get nine food right away. Um, obviously, I'm gonna, you know, take advantage of our farm. We got one harvest. Let's see if we can get another good harvest. Uh, three. Okay, that's not bad. That'll get us very close. We, yeah, we have one pip. We can for sure spend on that. We could get three research. I need five research so let's see if we can get two more research we did and now i would like to research the uh orchard actually let's not spend the two the two seem to be more helpful for us let's spend the four and that'll research that i do want to play this oh we have to extinguish a fire shoot that's gonna need fours um throw this explore there I just need as much food as I can possibly get, to be honest. 
I can get 30 each round, then that's ideal. Um, because that's a, as much as I am spending. This will destroy a random building. We definitely don't want that. Okay, we can get, we can harvest a little bit from that. Uh, I was hoping for more, actually. Okay, um, can't flip this dice. Type of village, can, you, so you can't throw an explorer on a building. Um, but, 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 where am I gonna, okay, we can throw this four. Build, I guess the, the builders are good. There, there's some, there's some little, uh, almost like environmental storytelling. I love the idea that the builders are better at putting out fires. Um, I would like to, um, put another die on that fire, but it's not going to happen and I'm not going to try and make it happen. So we'll just get some wood. We could make this a two. Um, is that going to actually help me with anything? It'll, I'll be able to get some more wood, I suppose. Sure, we'll get some more wood. So you might have noticed that when you place in the well, you're you're spending the well, uh, and then you have to rebuild it. Um, and so that costs some stone. It's still worth it though. I think it, it's it's very worth it. Hey, we got two more food from that. We almost made our quota. The fact that we didn't is a little scary, but hey. All right, we're gonna build an orchard if we possibly can that's gonna be more food why we really do we got like no fours huh even the builder didn't make become a four that is wild okay so we'll throw another builder on there um gonna try and get another harvest we did manage to get another harvest i'll throw that guy on there as well um can i oh we got apple trees oh heck yeah bud so apple tree, uh, I think apple trees provide permanent food. Each tree provides one food per turn. Deplete to grow. Yeah, so we want to deplete these to 16. That's why I was working toward or orchards are, are basically the same thing is they have like eight of these instead of only four, but the apple trees are going to give us more food. So we want to spend sixes on these if we can. We can only do it once per turn. So it's it's something we have to grow over time, but it's worth it. It's highly worth it. Um, if we can get, I kind of want to get rid of some of these extra locations. Um, there's nothing in forage. Oh God, we are really coming down to the wire. This is gonna, it's gonna be close. We're on turn three of six. Can we get some food from here? Oh no, uh, that, that really sucks. And we have a plague going. We need to spend fives on this. We have four turns to do that though. So um, we have time. Um, I just kind of want to get rid of one of these forests so I can get some other locations that'll offer us more food. Um, this seems That seems to be it. Let's throw some of these extra dice on our farm. I, I actually think I need another farmer. I, I am starting to fear for our well-being. Okay, re-roll. Not enough food for next turn. Yeah, things are getting dicey. No pun intended. Um, okay, let's throw a... Oh, we need to spend... Let's First of all, let's spend... Um, oh, God, look at all the horrifying events here. Uh, let's spend one of our fives here. We only got, okay, we got two fives. Thank goodness. Um, oh, re-roll this guy. I actually don't think I can afford to re-roll too many farmers. So I'll re re-roll the twos, because that will at least guarantee threes or fours. And then I'm just going to spend them on the harvest, and then I'll throw down one forager to get a second harvest okay that gets us like sort of over the line we have to survive for like two more turns we can start harvesting apiaries but good lord um it's it's gonna be close i can't even really spin afford to explore anymore where 
Where are our, all, all... We need to do another harvest. Okay, we'll spend another three. That's another harvest. That's good. Um, I'll throw two more sixes down there. That's going to be helpful. Uh, we could spend a... We could make this a four. Actually, let's make this a four. What do I need the four for? What am I trying to do with that? To be honest. Um, I guess that will let us uh, harvest from the apiary, so that is helpful. I do need to also rebuild the well. Very unlucky again that we've gotten a three from our builder. There's only two of six chance. So I guess a one in three chance of it not being a four. Ugh. Can I do anything with any of this? Not really. I'll, uh, I guess I'll spend an explorer on um, making an apple tree, but the explorers are actually like not being very helpful right now. They'll be helpful uh, in creating apple trees, but like other than that, we might need to make, I, I'm gonna make another farmer. I actually like, I, I, I am starting to fear. I say it's starting. I, I I am fearing. Okay, so if we can get two fours, uh, excluding um, the, uh, farmers, by the way, we got lucky with our farmers. Some of them, anyway. Let's see if we can get another couple of fours. Yes. Okay, that's that's really good. Um, did I accidentally place it somewhere? Sure hope not. So that there. We need a six for the beehives. We got a couple of fives, so we can find a cure for this plague. Uh, I really need one more five. But hey, what can I spend this? I could, um, oh, get some more food from this. We're below the food limit right now, but I think we're just barely going to make it. Kind of want to spend these two twos to get another harvest and then spend two fours to get another harvest and then spend two fours to get another harvest. Okay, cool. We're kind of betting the farm on, on that. Let's see. Um, I'm going to take a chance here and roll explore. Yes, we got a six. I was hoping for that so we can make another orchard that's going to give us more passive food. We'll throw this farmer on a, on the on the harvest. Um, throw this three on here. I don't see anywhere else where. It, oh wait, I tell a lie. We could uh, harvest that apiary and actually harvest it again for some more food. Where actually we did pretty well this turn. We did really well. We just need to, um, okay, we won. We did it. Survived six, six stages of the golden age. That was pretty quick. It was a lot quicker than my first game because I was kind of learning the, the ropes. But um, yeah, that's Dice Tribe's uh, ambitions. I really like this game and I, I intend to play much more of it. It kind of reminds me of like, you know, civilization, um, but it's obviously a lot more chill and um, but not too chill. I mean, it's almost got that kind of edge vibe that uh, Dot Age has, where like you know that every turn really matters. Every turn is going to count. Otherwise, you are going to find yourself um, out of luck, you know. So, but uh, I really like it. It's just it's got a good amount of agency. I like the how you kind of build things up, and I like the use of uh, dice. It doesn't feel too luck based. Um, it's really more than anything. It does kind of feel like just a basic worker placement um, But like you're you're kind of limited in which workers you can place where so I mean uh, It's it's intuitive But anyway, uh, if you enjoyed this definitely hit the like button and consider subscribing and let me know what you think of dice tribes in the comments Maybe you've played it. I'll see you guys next time. Take it easy